Welcome back everyone. Now recently I picked up an ASUS RX 480 Strix OC 8GB edition really just to kind of play around with for personal reasons, whatever. Well, it didn't take me very long with the card to see that I was kind of underwhelmed with its thermals. It just really wasn't that great. I was expecting it to be a lot cooler or at least a lot quieter than what it was, but it really wasn't. And I started messing around and because I didn't get this card to review or anything, I didn't track a lot of information. But what I did do was look around to see other people who had the card and maybe what they were doing. And that's when I ran into Obilzoid with actually hardcore overclocking on his channel where he just got the same card. And we kind of did the same thing he did where we just changed out the thermal pace first off just to kind of see and saw that the, the copper pipes weren't exactly ideal for the card, but was just wondering if there was a difference, maybe just the thermal paste would make. Well, the results were pretty good. I mean, obviously we had to take the card apart and void the warranty because there was a little sticker on there. I kind of wish it wasn't, especially after seeing the results here. So that's what we wanted to share with you guys today is the results of changing the thermal paste. Now we did use a thermal grizzly cryonaut, so it was fairly good thermal paste. We didn't use any less expensive one or try different thermal paste. This is just what I threw on there and that's what we rolled with and these were the results that we got now keep in mind that it's a 22 celsius ambient temperature in the room and both scenarios the video card was installed in a case the cooler master master case 5 at this point I guess it's a pro 5 but with the two 140 millimeter intake fans set to a thousand rpm so nothing crazy it wasn't on an open test bench it was in a case in a usable environment now at stock, the RX 480 Strix came in at 69 degrees Celsius. However, once replacing the thermal paste, that ran at 64 degrees Celsius. Now we found these temperatures by running a Unigen Heaven at 1440p for about a half hour. Now this was with the card at stock, the 1310 megahertz stock power curve, stock everything. So we just wanted to see out of the box what a difference this would make. Now moving on to the fan speed. Now the fan speed did reduce from 51% down to 48%. So we've got a five degree Celsius average drop on the top end under load with a 3% fan speed reduction, which did make the card noticeably quieter. Once you hit that 50% fan speed on this video card, you can really tell that the fan's turning. It's a little bit noisier than I was expecting it to be, but now it, the temperature levels are, well, they're fine. Now, the core clock prior stayed right around 1260 megahertz, and now it stays right at the 1300 to 1310. It stays closer, stays at the 1310 more often than it drops, but it does occasionally drop down to 1300. So not only do we see a five degree Celsius drop in temperature, 3% in the fan speed, and then uh, we, we also see a 40 to uh, 50 megahertz average bump under load which is really nice that's like going in and overclocking but you get it right on the back but what does that mean performance wise well i didn't run any real game tests to kind of validate that but because the system that we we're running on was fairly fresh uh we did run 3d mark time spot and recorded the graphic score the graphic score with the stock thermal paste was 4057 and then with the replaced thermal paste we're looking at 4183. So that got it up 3% overall in that performance metric. So there's a tangible gain. So if you're perfectly fine with avoiding your warranty and you've got the Strix 480, it might be worth it to replace that thermal paste. Otherwise, if those little bit of numbers aren't quite enough to you know, sell you on the idea, well, you're still getting a decent card. So there is that. All right, guys, it's been Keith with WCCF Tech, and we'll keep you in the next video.